Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to make another video about the topic test because I got a number of comments on my previous video asking me to go into a bit more detail about the various sections and how I would prepare for the test. So in this video I'm going to go just into the listening section of the test. And then in some later videos I'll go into the reading and the writing and maybe some other tips for preparing for the test. Uh, first I'm going to show you the different types of questions that can appear on the test. And then after that, I'm going to show you how I would go about solving one of the questions under exam conditions. And finally, I'm going to show you how you can use these past listening exams to prepare for a future topic test that you want to take. But first, before we begin, I want to show you the results from my most recent topic exam, which I took at the end of last year. So when I took the topic exam two years ago, I did a lot of intense study for about four or five months before the test. And I was able to sort of scrape by and get a, a good score. But this time I did almost no preparation for the test itself, but my Korean overall has improved a lot. So I thought it'd be interesting to see how the results uh, compare. So the test I took two years ago, I got 234, which was 92 on the listening, 72 on the writing and 70 on the reading. And then this time when I took the test, I got a slightly higher score, 241, my listening score was the exact same at 92. Uh, my writing went down to 63, but my reading went up to 86. And I think this is because the reading section has the more difficult language, slightly more difficult vocabulary in it. So since my Korean overall has improved in the two years since I took the test last time, my reading score went up. But the writing section requires a bit more specific preparation uh, for the test itself. So maybe because of that, my writing score went down. Or maybe I was just having a bad day, who knows. Uh, but anyway, I thought this would be interesting to show you guys. Now let's get on to the video. So listening and writing is together. Listening test by itself is uh, 60 minutes and there are 50 questions to answer. So as I explained in my previous video, the audio file will play and from start to finish, they won't pause it. The uh, questions will simply run from start to finish and most questions will be read twice, except for the ones at the start. So the first few questions just require you to choose the matching picture. So you'll listen to the audio and choose which picture uh, matches to what they're saying. And usually the, the audio clip is pretty short. Uh, and these ones will only be read once, I think. The third one's a similar one with the graph. Sometimes, since these are two different types of graphs, you have to sort of try and figure out which one they're referring to pretty quickly. So you can then uh, choose between those similar types of graphs. But yeah, the first few questions are pretty uh, self-explanatory. From there, you have to choose for, I think questions four to about 13, you have to choose which one will come next. So for question four, 다음 대화를 잘 듣고 이어질 수 있는 말을 고르십시오. So listen to the dialogue and choose the words that can come next. So you listen to who's speaking uh, and then just choose what comes next. For 9 to 12, it's pretty similar, uh, but you say instead of what they're going to say, you're going to say uh, choose the option that describes what they're going to do next. So, 다음 대화를 잘 듣고, 여자가 이어서 할 행동을 알맞은 것을 고르십시오. So, the important thing to note when you're reading these questions is first, if it's the man or the woman who's doing it, and then also what they're asking you to choose. So sometimes they're asking you, uh, choose the one which best describes what the woman is saying. Or for example, choose the answer which best describes uh, what the who the man is. Um, so yeah, you should make sure you read these questions and pay close attention to whether it's a man or a woman and what they're asking you to, uh, to describe. Anyway, from 13 until the end, they're all basically the same. It'll be listen to this and then choose which one matches. Now these can either be choose which one matches the contents, neong, so, choose what matches the contents. Uh, if I go down here, for example here, 남자가 여자에게 말하는 의도를 고르십시오. So choose which one best describes uh, the man's intention in talking to the woman. So what is he trying to do? Or here, uh, yeah, choose the one which matches the content. 
들은 내용, the content. Uh, or here, 여자는 누구인지 uh, 많은 것을 고르십시오. So choose which one best describes who the woman is. Um, or here again, same one, 들은 내용, which one matches the content. 남자의 생각으로 알맞은 것을 고르십시오. So choose which one matches the man's thoughts. Or here, 남자의 태도, the man's attitude. So if you just read the questions, they're generally pretty easy to understand here. So those are all the types of questions, basically. They're all very similar. You just have to listen and choose the one that matches uh, the closest. Okay, now I'm going to go through how you would solve one of these questions in the test situation. Uh, just remember that in the actual test, you have to be doing everything quite quickly. So I'm going to take it slow now, but during the actual test, you have to rush a little bit. So before we even hear the question, you need to have read all of the possible answers so that while you're listening to the audio, you can eliminate the wrong ones and you can be um, choosing your correct answer that you want to put in. And this is why time management is so important in the listening section, because you have to sort of stay ahead of the recording. So for the first question, 여자는 누구인지 맞는 것을 고르십시오. So choose which one best describes who the woman is. So first one, 전자책을 조사하는 사람, 전자책을 골라주는 사람, 전자책 구독 서비스에 가입한 사람, 전자책 구독 서비스를 개발한 사람. And for each of these answers, I would be highlighting one or two key words that tell you uh, who it is. So that when you're choosing your answer, you can quickly refer to it and you don't have to read the whole thing again. So for the first one, I might highlight 조사하는, so the yeah, investigating person, or 전자책을 골라주는, choosing person. For this one, 전자책 구독 서비스. So since these are both the same, the word that's different is here, so 가입한, subscribing person, or 전자책 구독 서비스를 개발한 사람, developing. So is she investigating electronic books, choosing electronic books, subscribing to an electronic service, or has she developed an electronic book service? Next one. 들은 내용으로 맞는 것을 고르십시오. So choose the one which best matches the content that you've heard. 이 서비스는 무료로 이용이 가능하다. 이 서비스는 아직 이용자가 많지 않다. 이 서비스는 책에 대한 해설도 제공한다. 이 서비스는 동영상 기능을 추가할 예정이다. So again, just like for the first one, I would be highlighting some important words. So for the first one, um, this service can be used for free. I'd say for free is probably the most important one there. For the second one, 이 서비스는 아직 이용자가 많지 않다. Maybe I would do 많지 않다. It's pretty useful. So there's not many users yet. 이 서비스는 책에 대한 해설, 해설도 uh, 제공한다. So here I would probably put this one. So like a um, interpretation or an explanation. And the last one, 이 서비스는 동영상 기능을 추가할 예정이다. So they're planning to introduce a video feature. So maybe we'll highlight this. So ideally, you would have done this, read all the answers, highlighted some useful words before the audio plays. So I'm going to play the audio now. We'll listen to it. It plays twice for the actual test, but in the interest of time, I'll just play it once. If you want to listen to it again, you can rewind the video. Chegun 
더 즐겁게 독서할 수 있는 여러 방법을 계속 고민 중이에요. 다시 들으십시오. Okay, so after hearing it once, they'll play it again. Um, but yeah, while you're listening to it, you should be trying to notice some things that eliminate certain answers. So for example, when she says, uh, 매달, uh, 매달 비용을 내면, so if you pay every month, that means that this number one is wrong because it's not free. Uh, or when she says that there's, um, it's popular or successful, there's lots of users, this second one is also wrong. There's not a few users, there's many users. Um, so yeah, while you're listening, you'll just cross them off. Uh, but let's say, for example, I couldn't get if it was three or four. So I'm not sure if it's uh, if it has an explanation about the books or if it has if they have plans to introduce a video feature. Ideally, you'd on the second listening, you'd be listening out especially for these ones and hopefully eliminating one of them. But let's say we got all the way to the end and I didn't know which one it was. They both sound like they're possible, like they're plausible. I would say choose the most logical one, the one that makes the most sort of <laughs> logical sense to you, given the story. But if you really can't choose between them, just leave it. And then at the end of the listening test, um, when you get to the last question, then you can choose your guesses for all of the questions that you skipped before. So yeah. That's how I would go about answering these questions. And then as soon as you've answered this question, remember, you need to start reading the possible answers for the next one. So you really need to stay ahead of the audio so you can get everything ready before you even hear, uh, hear the, the audio file. So now that we've seen how to solve the question, I'm going to show you how you can use these past exams to help you study. So if we look at the same question, I have here the transcript of the uh, of the same question, of question 29 and 30. So here we can read and listen to the exact same question that we just saw. And I would say the most useful thing you can do here is to read through and highlight the words that you don't know. So you can just make a note as you're going through, okay, I don't know this word, or I don't know this ending, just highlight them all so that you can look them up, you can break them down and you can see what sort of gaps in your knowledge exist. So if we read them here, 사장님께서 만든 전자책 구독 서비스에 인기 비결이 뭐라고 생각하세요? So let's say, okay, 사장님, uh, let's say maybe I don't know, uh, I don't know what 계서 is. Okay, I'll highlight that. 전자책 구독 서비스, uh, maybe let's say I don't know 구독 and I don't know 비결, for example. So um, you'd go through and highlight these words. Next, 독서를 위한 다양한, so you just go through the whole thing highlight whatever words you don't know uh, and whatever endings. So let me just maybe select another couple of examples here. Um, maybe let's say I don't know, maybe manhua and then maybe I don't know this ending like hashotaguyo, let's say, I don't know this. All right, so once you've highlighted all these words, we're gonna go to Naver Dictionary and we're gonna look up all the words that we didn't know. So for example, uh, the first one was an ending, was geso. So if I type that in here, oops. If you type this here, you can usually search up endings as well. And it'll give you a brief information, uh, a brief uh, sort of description of it here. So ga, i, and no mar. So it's the same ending as ga or i, but it's for uh, a person of higher status than you. And it can mean from, but uh, it means the subject marker. Or if we look at the next one, we had Gudok. When we look it up and we see it means subscription. So Gudok service would be subscription service. We had bigger. If we look it up, we see it means the secret to or the key to or the know how. Yeah. So by looking up these words, okay, we can get a better picture of what the whole text means. So You'd go through for this, just looking up all the words you didn't know. Then we'll go back to the text again and we'll just read it again, but with our new knowledge about what it means. So, 사장님께서 만든 전자책 구독 서비스에 인기 비결이 뭐라고 생각하세요? So, you don't have to translate it word for word because it's better to try and think 
in the word order of Korean, but using the three words that we just looked up, it should now make sense that it means what do, what do you think is the key to the success of your uh, of your ebook subscription service that you made, or well, the key to the uh, popularity instead of here yeah, inky meaning popularity instead of success. So you'd go through this for all of the questions for the whole test, looking up all the words you didn't know, and the next step is I'd say it's optional. It's if it works for you, you can do it. If it doesn't work for you, you don't have to do it, but it's flashcards. So if you personally find that flashcards are useful and they help you uh, memorizing new words, then go ahead. You can make flashcards for these new words. But if you don't really like it and you know you think it's kind of a boring thing, I would say maybe you don't have to, uh, you don't have to bother with, with making flashcards. It's better just to um, periodically revise these texts. So instead of seeing the words, you know, isolated in a flashcard, just see them again in the same texts. So what I would do is for the listening test, I would listen to it on my way to work in the morning. So I would listen to maybe half of it on the way there and then another half on the way back. And I would just constantly be exposing myself to these same words again, and especially paying attention to these new words that I, uh, that I maybe hadn't seen before. And yeah, that's, basically the way that you can use these past exams to study for a future exam. Um, the more you do of this, so the more exams you do and the more questions you do, the more different sort of fields of vocabulary you're exposing yourself to and hopefully the fewer gaps in your knowledge there will be. Um, but you don't just have to do this for the exam, uh, the exam contents. You can do this for any piece of content you can find that has audio and text audio and a transcript. So YouTube videos that have subtitles, you can do the same thing. Uh, if you go to maybe talk to me in Korean's Iyagi series, they have yeah 10 minute conversations with a transcript. And the process is the base, basically the exact same. You listen to it, you understand as much as you can. Maybe, maybe it's 1%, maybe it's 80%, doesn't matter. Um, and then you go through, you read, you find out which words you don't know, which endings you don't know, you look them up, you sort of decipher the text a bit, re-break it down. And then the really important step is to repeat. You go back, you listen to it again and again and again, and you become more and more familiar with these new words. And at the end of the day, learning new vocabulary is just about becoming more familiar with it, which means exposing yourself to it as much as you can. So I hope this was useful for you guys. If you have any more questions about the listening test in particular or the topic test in general, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. So I'll make another one about the reading section, about the writing section, and yeah, about anything else that you guys are curious about. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.